Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Final Boss Boss Fight. This time, we're going to be talking about Franchise Mayhem, which is going to be different companies taking different uh, franchises from other companies and making their games. I am here with AJ. How's it going? It goes. It goes, sir. It's a good Saturday night. And for the first time ever, Joa. What's going on? How's it going? Good. Having a good night? Yes. Sweet. Well, we got a pretty fun show, but I wanted to start us off because I haven't talked to all of you in a little bit about games. Uh, what has everyone been playing? And I will let you two decide who wants to go first. You go, AJ. Uh, not a lot lately. I uh, played through the Outriders demo and was pretty severely underwhelmed. That was kind of a bummer. Same. But other than that, yeah. been enjoying some Destiny lately. Uh, what else has come out? Something else we were talking about earlier last week. Uh, I, you know, I don't remember what we were talking about last week in terms of games. <laughs> yeah, can't remember. There's something else I finished in the last couple of weeks, but I lost it. I'm watching lots of Wandavision. Yeah, that's good. That, <laughs> I have not watched a single episode. Oh man, I, I need to watch it. I'm I'm pretty behind on TV shows right now. It's good. It's real good. <laughs> well, very nice. Joe, what have you been playing? As for me, I've been playing a lot of Valheim, because that's what's hot right now, and I'm having a great time with that, and then I'm getting back into Final Fantasy XIV online. I haven't is... played any of those. <laughs> yeah. You've heard a bit about Valheim, though, right? Yeah. I, mean, it's, I have it's a couple friends right that now. want me to play it, and I just... It's. I don't know. I was skeptical. It's it's fair to be because it's just another survival game gotcha. in an already saturated market, but it's got a lot going for it. So it's it's worth a look. I've enjoyed it so far, and I hated a lot of the games that I tried, like The Forest. I never finished it, and other games in that vein. So I just can't trust it. Really? <laughs> yeah, Day I, one I when the game came out, the reviews were phenomenal. I was like, we have to, I have to get this game because everyone's saying it's great. I don't That's usually been for like seven years now. I know, but I mean, this how was many of them this, come this out was an anomaly. Them? This was an anomaly, and it seemed it's already what in the top 250, 250 highest uploaded games on Steam. It's insane. Yeah, it's people I don't know. It. It spiked like crazy, and it has, what, 4 million active users now? I think they're going to hit 5 million soon. I think more of that has to do with the recent popularity of Rust and just Twitch trending in general rather than... That is true, yeah. Rust did make a giant comeback, but... uh... I mean, you look at all those games, all the survival-style games that have come out. We had Ark, The Forest, Rust, Daisy... But that's that's what I mean. That is the problem, is it's oversaturated. So I think that Valheim compared to those games that I've had so far is a great it's just it's just different than those I, I've played yeah. a good majority of those games and it it really is kind of a fresh experience it it almost takes me back to you know when I played Minecraft in Alpha when it came out I was a pretty early adopter of that game as I had a friend who learned about it far before I did so I played it before it even hit beta and it, it definitely reminds me a lot of that in terms of how I felt kind of playing it for the first time going in blind and learning the mechanics and uh everything else that has to do with it so i don't know i hope it keeps up i mean so far it's got a lot of steam for me i, I hope it doesn't kind of hit a bit of a slump because yeah it seems like games like that have a tendency to really go and then just grind to a halt you're like okay i'm done and then you move on to something else i really hope it <laughs> holds my attention like minecraft did when it was still new it's definitely starting in a better spot than a lot of them. But the thing that worries me is we've seen all these yeah. games over the last like seven plus years where they they come out, they get a, a big swell of popularity, usually due to Twitch, and they get all this money coming in, and then they never finish the game. Like seven no, days to die, it's still an not, alpha. Yeah. Like I, I would hope not, but I mean, you know, it, it's it seems to me like it's more polished than some of the AAA stuff that's coming out right now, which is kind of mechanics. Funny. Yeah, the mechanics all. That, the visuals so. look horrendous to me. You don't like them? No, it looks like garbage. It looks like a <laughs> PS2, like late end PS2. Here's, type. Okay, here's the thing. I grew up playing old school RuneScape back when that was still hot. So to me, yeah. it's like a love letter. But I <laughs> yeah. get what you mean. It's definitely not the most 
pretty looking game. The lighting I think is great, but it's got a very unique art style that I could agree that not everybody would like. But me personally, it works well for me. I, I do like the, uh, the aesthetic it went for. And normally that's right up my alley. I mean, I played Ultima Online well into the time uh, that like, okay, World of Warcraft yeah. was launching. So I'm used to like the old school games and I used to love that. But I don't know, man, with these survival games, like okay. they got to start, they got to start doing something new. The only thing that one has going for it is like Viking. And that's about it. <laughs> Other than that, I'm like, <laughs> man, you know, I, yeah, I, I want, to try it out eventually i i have a couple friends that have been asking to play it and want me to get into it i just seems hard for me to get into like i have grounded and it's pretty fun it's you know it's all right um i don't know i feel like i just keep going back to minecraft though and i feel like i it's a super comparison but (laughs) it's like i have minecraft over here and then all these other games over here i just want to play minecraft (laughs) like in terms of those games, so I, I don't know. I, I'm happy that it seems to be pretty steady, I guess, in terms yeah. of uh, players constantly logging on to it uh, and in terms of sales. So, I mean, I, I'm hopeful that this one is one that stays. And from what it sounds like, I know a couple people that are on that train and want it to do really well. Uh, and yeah. they're really liking yeah. it so far. So Me too. I would really like it to stay the course and not pull a classic take the money and run kind of thing right because that happens to he, like you're absolutely right aj that happens all the time in these indie developers especially when they blow up in popularity yeah and they sell five million copies at release like they a just couple weeks after launch <laughs> that's a lot of money even for a, a cheaper game it's it's not it's 20 bucks you know right. online yeah. so it's, it's not as expensive as some other ones but i mean for an early access game that's pretty average pricing if we get to the like three to six month window and they're still doing consistent improvements and updates, yeah. I'll probably hop on the train. But until then, like I've just been burned too many times. I can't keep going back to that. I, I 100% thing, you know? understand. I, I've been burned many times too. There are things that I no longer trust. This was kind of a kind of a, a risk for me to try it out, and so far it's seeming like it's paid off. But I mean, yeah, it just depends on long run, I guess. If they keep updating the game as long as they support it right. Um, as long as they maintain their current course, I think they'll they'll do all right. I think it'll stand out amongst the survival crafting genre in general if they can keep it up. So we just so have too. to hope that they don't, uh, you know, smell the money and just dip out. <laughs> I hope not. I, I feel like they're not that way because I almost feel like they would already kind of be showing that they're going to do that. But it seems like they yeah. want to take care of their player base and make sure that they keep going. So i'm hopeful i'm hopeful for them i mean i there's a good chance i will probably end up playing that game i don't know when or with who but there's probably a good chance that it's gonna happen <laughs> uh, i'm pretty sure you and i will be hopping in in a couple months i just gotta wait and see <laughs> gotta give it that initial window see if a bunch of people get screwed over it's understandable and i don't think there's anything wrong with waiting on that so uh and then yeah i'm i'm pretty much the same i played the outriders demo with aj um, I also agree. I mean, I, I am notorious for not caring about those style of games. Like I don't really care too much for destiny Avengers played the beta. That was about it. Um, uh, division division was okay. I didn't mind one and two, but also didn't really get into those games. So I was just kind of under underwhelmed, I guess with the demo of outriders. It, it has a lot going for it. I don't mind. I think the shooting feels really nice. Um, the cover system is really good, but the story so far is kind of meh, which I feel like a lot of those games have that problem is their story is okay. It's mostly here's some content, play and grind and, you know, get the gear, get the weapons. So I don't know. I will yeah. see what happens there. I, I will try to play more of it uh, this weekend, but I mean, where I'm at, I'm just kind of like yeah, it's out and I have other things I want to play. <laughs> so, so I played a little For bit of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say for them to like turn their social media into pointing out that like the demo is not a beta. It's not an alpha. It's like, it's just the first chunk of a finished product. And then to play it in that state, I was like, ah, nah, you should have called this a beta. Yeah. And and I think that's what it is. I mean, it's, it plays like a beta. Realistically, it is an open beta that has more 
missions and more things to do than a beta. So I guess that's maybe why they didn't call it one, but it feels like a beta for sure. Um, and then uh, the two of you know, I am a Switch owner again. So I, I do have a Switch. I bought Super Mario 3D World because, duh, I had to. So I've played a little bit of that. I got to World 2 uh, two nights ago. I uh, haven't, haven't played any more since then, and then I have been grinding my life away on Neo 2 for the last week and a half, because damn, that game is real good, and it's real fun. It I is, liked 1. I never I never played 2. Never uh, started it. Two I is, don't even own it on any console. 2 is good. I think I like 2 more than 1, and, and I don't know if that's because... So I bought one when it came out because, you know, I let AJ talk me into it. He was like, hey, it's a Souls-like game. I know you hate those, but buy it. And I was like, dope, I'll get it. Fine. <laughs> and, uh, it, was, it was good. One is good. I never finished it, and I never went back to it because I was awful at those games. But then the PS5 came out, bought Demon Souls, played it. Yeah, I played it with friends, and maybe AJ and maybe Matt carried me, but... I still had a great time, and I feel like uh, you know the other couple playthroughs I was by myself, and I did okay. Um, so I went ahead and bought the the remaster collection on PS5. Uh, buttery smooth 60 frames is real nice. They have 100 and uh, what is it 120 20 frames uh, mode. I would like to try. I don't know. I mean, my monitor does 144 hertz, so I think if I just plug it in there, I might be able to play it on 120. But I don't I don't know if that's how that works or not. So. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying that game so far. I had Austin, uh, he ended up getting it, and I've been helping him out through some of the worlds. So it's kind of nice that Neo 1, I had my friend Hunter help me on basically the entire game that I've played so far. And now I am the opposite. I get to help Austin while he struggles. <laughs> so it's it's kind of nice. I'm glad that I'm finally in a good mindset to play those games, and I feel good about playing those games. So that's really nice. Um. Yeah, but besides that, I mean, that's really it. I mean, I played a little bit of Cold War for the League play. Um, oh, yeah, that too. I played uh, Outbreak. It just came out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And Outbreak's pretty I played Outbreak fun. for the first time, and I was late to playing Firebase Z because it's been out for a little bit, but I uh, just didn't play it for whatever reason at the time that it launched. But uh, Firebase Z is pretty fun. That It is. Yeah, I like it a lot. I finished the main Easter egg, and then I played Outbreak basically day one. And uh, it's different. It's very different, it but I like it. I like it a lot. But I mean, I was not ready going into that. On right. my first run, I got to like round nine, I think it was. Okay. Uh, it was hard. It, like, it, it is it hard. Gets, <laughs> it, it gets challenging very quickly, and if you're not ready when you move to the next area, you're just dead. You just die. Yeah, we. It was me, Austin, and Jacob playing it the other night, and it just. You're so right, man. If you're not ready, you get into another fucking map, and it is just downhill. If you don't have the right guns yeah. or the right setup, you are so screwed, and it is tough, man. I don't see how you can run anything other than shotguns because everything by round six moves so fast. Gotcha. They're so quick. It's insane. <laughs> like, they are moving towards you at speeds. I think You can't outrange them. You can get in a car, but sooner or later, they're going to catch up with you. It's... uh. It's crazy, yeah. It just becomes close, close quarters combat. Like you better pack your shotgun early because you don't have a lot of options after right. that, really. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's I had probably an a deeper AK. meta that I'm not understanding, but probably. And I, I think it's I'm in new, the same boat. So <laughs> people will figure it out. But for now, until I got a shotgun and started packing it, I was just getting demolished. It was not pretty. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough, but it's it's a good time, and I'm glad to see that zombies. I, I've never really been a zombies person, so. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I like like Left 4 Dead and World War Z, and like I like zombie games. I just mm. never really cared for zombies in Call of Duty. But now okay. with the outbreak mode, I'm enjoying it a little bit more because it's it's open, so I don't feel like I'm stuck uh, in a corner all the time. I can just run around and shoot things. So uh, outbreak was pretty yeah. fun the other night, and I I probably it's, will play more. It's pretty surreal, uh, I would say, because I played modded Black Ops One zombies back in the day, gotcha. and there you could have any size map you want. But right. it felt so fabricated because obviously it's a modded map. It's not the real deal. Playing official zombies content in a map bigger than any other zombies map ever made was pretty bizarre. It's nuts. It almost, it almost felt like a mod, even though it wasn't. Right. Uh, and it, it's it's pretty seamless, I would say. Um, so I'm happy to see, I'm excited to see where it goes. I hope they develop it further because as of right now, I don't think there's any official Easter egg 
you just go. Yeah, I think you so. Die. As far There's as I no know, real definitive ending. They'll probably add one. Uh, although I don't know why they wouldn't do that at launch. They did that with every other level. Because so, Treyarch, who, who knows? <laughs> yeah, they're 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 busy trying to balance their unbalanced game. <laughs> yeah, everything else. <laughs> Right on, dudes. Well, before we get into the topic, I do need to bring up a couple announcements. Uh, the first thing is I am streaming again after four years of telling myself I would never stream again. I started streaming again last month, and that was proud of, kind of fun. So we're doing more streams. I have convinced AJ, unfortunately, I have convinced uh, AJ to play Resident Evil 6 with me on stream. Excuse you? <laughs> I don't remember this conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do. Well, <laughs> you got you those know. text messages. <laughs> you got those text messages. You got that game. I gifted it to you. And I know it's in its own little fi or file folder. I know what's in there. I know what it I is. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I you know. No, you know what I'm talking about. Because you and I both are not excited. But we're going to have fun. We're, we're going to make some fun streams. You know, we'll... The game sucks. The game sucks. But you and I, we'll have fun. We'll have some good vibes. You know, and that that's all that really matters is some friendship. So what's wrong with RE6, Glenn? <laughs> oh, God, don't start. <laughs> a lot. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> so that is happening. I don't know when. Obviously, I would have to talk to AJ about that. So we'll we'll plan for that. Probably maybe sometime in March or maybe sometime in April uh, before before we get closer and closer to RE8. Um and then, yes, uh, I have tweeted out and I put it on the Instagram that final, or final boss boss fight is back. It will be us three, hopefully all the time, unless something comes up with one of us, then, you know, we'll figure that out as it goes. But you will be seeing all three of us talking about fun topics and just hanging out. So look forward to more boss fights. It has been a couple months since the last one. So we're back. We're finally back and we're doing it. Um, any other announcements? I think that is everything. I think that is all I have to say. So now we will get into the goods. Franchise license mayhem. Who wants to kick us off with their first game made by their studio? <laughs> Anybody. Mm. I mean, I will go don't first. Don't at once. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> Listen, we're all here. We, we got all night. <laughs> I will go first if I have to, because I feel like I have a pretty good one, and I, I think we all might have it. So I, I will go first. I will start us off. Everyone likes Platinum Games, right? Yes. Platinum Games makes good games. Well, part of their studio, because I, I, I think they're split, right? They have different sections. You got, like, the Bayonetta team, you got the Metal Gear Rising team, and then you got, what was that Switch game? Uh, Astral Chain, right? Astral Chain, yeah. I know where you're going, and I'm already hurt. Why? Already. Do you have the... I, I put Wolverine down as a platinum game. Ah, oh, this guy. No, that's not where I thought you were going. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> that's a good I question. thought you were going for the other one. No. So I, I did Wolverine for platinum games. I just... Playing through Metal Gear Rising, and I haven't played through Bayonetta yet. I, I did buy it on a Steam sale for five bucks. I will be playing it. That is happening this year for yep. sure because I've never played a Bayonetta. Uh, I've played a demo of Bayonetta 1 and maybe 2, but that was so long ago. Um, but Metal Gear Rising, very fun game. And I, I was sitting there when this topic was talked about. I just I don't know who else would do a better Wolverine game than them. And with Marvel being a very hot market in terms of video games, like Spider-Man was great for Sony. Uh, now you have Avengers that... I, can I call that great? I mean, it, it has its fan base. It has its purpose. People enjoy that game. So I feel like Marvel is starting to get good games and good studios to work on those games. And I just, I just, I want to play a good Wolverine game. Uh, and I, I think Wolverine uh, Origins, right? That was the name of that game? X-Men Wolverine Origins? X-Men Origins Something Wolverine? Like that. I haven't like that. played a lot of the, any of the Marvel themed games. Gotcha. That game was okay. I didn't mind that game compared to the other Wolverine games that have been out, like on the GameCube and on the original Xbox. Uh, but yeah, man, Platinum Games Wolverine is my, my number one choice because why not? Who else would make a good Wolverine game? So Well, that... I mean, the who else is definitely Naughty Dog. Ooh. Is that what Naughty you Naughty Dog put? making an old man Logan game. Oh. 
Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That I mean, that would that answers that part of it. But still, I agree, it's a bummer. Wow, you put Naughty Dog making an old man Logan, huh? Well, no, that's just something that I've always wanted to see, and I know we never will. But okay, yeah. that's the point. We're never going to see any of these <laughs> because it's impossible. No, 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 no. I the my next one. You're, you're holding out hope. That I one day. think my next one might might be true. I don't think Platinum Games can do anything not anime. <laughs> Make Wolverine it's anime. So, I don't care. That's fine. It's all, it's all Japanese. Metal Gear Rising is the most Japanese Western <laughs> product that exists on the planet. Look, you're not wrong. I, I, uh, I agree with you. It's great. Honestly, I love it. I love their, their style. I think that they're great in that regard. And Metal Gear Rising, although a fairly clunky game in some regards, is still one of my favorite experiences, both story and characters and the soundtrack, too. I mean... It's a great time. Yeah. I think they could make a banging soundtrack. Whoever did the soundtrack for that game if they did the the wolverine game too hell yeah man my heart rate would never drop <laughs> who, who, who's going I'd, next I'd oh i guess we gotta bullets. hear your first one what, what's your number one over there joa okay so i am pretty new to vr relatively speaking okay. i've had my headset for about a year now out of every game that i've played i think that half-life alex is arguably the best one it is incredibly agree. well produced True. Gorgeous looking. The shooting, the mechanics, even the movement. You have multiple options. It's great. So that as a framework for uh, the developers at Valve, that particular team that worked on Ox, I don't think they have a, a designation. I mean, it's just Valve Game Studios, maybe Valve VR Game Studios. I would like them to make a Dead Space game. Oh, I interesting. I love the original Dead Space. It's okay. amazing. Even in a third-person perspective, uh, which arguably is a pretty big core of the game, the fact that the UI is part of your back and your gun, it's all holographic, so uh, it's a seamless UI. Unfortunately, you would lose a portion of that if you switch to a first-person perspective, but I think from a horror standpoint, very few games, to me, ever match the original Dead Space. I played it on Xbox 360 however long ago when it was still fairly new, and I mean, it scared the piss out of me. It was horrifying. So just thinking about playing that in first person with necromorphs flying at you and you've got to <laughs> cut their arms off in first person, I mean... I'm in. I think that'd be sick. And there's not only that, but, you know, there's some other things. Motion sickness in the original game, you do this crazy stuff where you're jumping off walls. You have zero gravity. But I think that could work fairly well in VR. But I really just think the the shooting and, like, you know, the really narrow claustrophobic hallways, it could really be emphasized with a first person perspective in VR especially because you have to be very precise in your aiming and uh, weirdly enough Half-Life Alex for a game that is controlled with VR controllers is surprisingly accurate like after I played that game for enough time you know I could pop combine around corners in the head with relative ease so getting good at using uh, the I think it's called the laser cutter I believe is what it is in uh, yeah. in Dead Space to cut to cut limbs off I mean that seems pretty fun to me, I think. And horror-wise, it would be 10 times scarier. Because I played... Absolutely. Uh, Pav Pavlov is another game on VR. There's a mode, there's a zombie mode, right? Where they just have, like, DayZ or uh, World War Z-style zombies, the really fast ones, flying at you full speed while you're trying to shoot and reload your gun <laughs> in VR. It's, it's also horrifying. So that, with the atmosphere, the music and sound design of Dead Space, all that together... Is just like I think that'd be the coolest horror VR game they could ever make. Plus, I just want another Dead Space game. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like hands the developer down, one of the murder, best. It's dead. They killed it. Like, it's never coming back. I am so depressed. Three was not the greatest, but one and two are just beautiful. I love Especially two. two. Yeah, two one of the great. best franchises ever. Absolutely. That get yeah. Any respect. Absolutely, man. I Dead Space is so ridiculously good, and that's a good pick. I I didn't even think when I was making my list. And thinking about the topic, I didn't even think about VR stuff, and I think that is an excellent. Yeah, it was it was actually the last one that I thought of, even though oh. it's at the top of my list for preference. But I was like, yeah, you know, I didn't really think about VR. But I was like, Alex was such a good experience. Right. I would love to to blast some necromorphs in in first person. For sure. Okay. AJ, was your old man Logan? Was that your first one, or do, do you say no, no. Okay. That was just an answer to your question of gotcha. who could do it who better. Could do it. Like, okay. And, and I can I, see them totally doing that. I would like that. I, I have ideas about a Naughty Dog topic. Um, 
for for another time. Uh, so it's interesting that you put that out there. <laughs> so, uh, what is your number one then, or not number one, but your your first one, I guess. So I went a little different. I when you kind of sent me the topic, I took it more as potential games that either we want to happen or could happen that have had licensing issues. Oh, um, okay. Like ones that have already existed. And for me, it was the the King of, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur MMO. Oh. Like, that's what the game was building to, was that's this entire, <laughs> this, this crazy MMO world that never happened because of all the licensing BS that happened with Kingdoms of Amalur. Yeah. Like, it was hands down one of one of the best mechanically and skill-based games that they had made with kind of a a hybrid action MMO style to it. And you could see every element of it, how it would fit into an MMO. But because of all the licensing crap that happened, you know, it it died. And thankfully we got it back with THQ picking it up. But I mean, I highly doubt we will ever see the MMO. Maybe a sequel, but I doubt anything else. You think you make a good point, especially with it being with uh, THQ now, because I feel like they're still promising Dead Island 2, which... <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why they promised us that. What was it, 2019? They're Jackson, like, it's still coming. It will be missed. <laughs> like, dude, it's just not coming. You can go ahead and get rid of it now. It's not coming. I mean, I don't didn't really... they show the first video in the PS3 gen? Like... Uh, I think it was when the PS4 was announced. Did they? Yeah. No, I think it was just that one trailer the of the guy like one running the, the, uh, down the, the road. Yep. Yeah. And then Jack Black in a van. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I can't wait for that game to come out. <laughs> and here we are in 2021. That game was it's shown dead. off in 2013, 2014, and it's not coming. <laughs> it's going to be like Duke Nukem Forever. It's never oh. coming out. And, and when it does, it's going to be It's going to be bad. <laughs> Duke Nukem Forever is bad. I am much more excited for Dying Light 2 than I am for that game. I mean, yeah, me too. Speaking, and speaking Dying of 2, Dying Light 2, where the hell is that game at? <laughs> Where's that game at? It's in a tough it. spot. I mean, one is fantastic, and it has some of the best post-release support I've ever seen in any game ever. Right. They still put new content in that game on a regular basis, but I would like the second one because um, I kind of I kind of experienced all that the first one had to offer other than the new additional content, which is usually just themed uh multiplayer stuff which i never really liked the multiplayer much so right okay yeah hopefully that game comes out soon or at least we get some news we haven't had any news for yeah I, a while i think the last e3 before everything got shut down and they canceled e3 was the last we heard of the game at all i think uh, so too as far as i remember i don't remember anything else exactly. in 2020 about that game i don't even know if anything happened in 2019 about that game I feel like I should look it up. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I just want to see. I just want to see if they have like a Twitter. I haven't. I don't follow them or anything. So I, I mean, a, I, uh, they have a Twitter. I'm pretty sure. What do you say, AJ? On a on a side note, I completely spaced the uh, the other game I've been playing, and I, I want you both to take a look if you haven't. Okay. Uh, mm. Check out Curse of the Dead Gods. Mm. That is the new rogue like. Curse of the Dead or Death. Dead. 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 Dead gods. Okay. It is, it's basically, um, it is Hades meets Slay the Spire. Uh, I love Slay okay. the Spire. That's a good game. It is one of the coolest roguelike games I think I've ever played. Like, I think Hades is better in terms of narrative uh, and sound design, but yeah. this game, the mechanics of it and the way they use some of the elements that I specifically remember from Slay the Spire is, oh my God, it's so cool. How much is it? Do you know? On Steam? Uh, it's twenty bucks, I believe. Twenty bucks, I believe so. And I believe it came out on Steam this week and was on sale instantly for fifteen, I believe, on Steam. And then it's Something it's on like Switch that. as well, right? Yeah, it's twenty bucks. It's on sale for eighteen for oh. the like buy it early sale on Steam. Okay. What was it? One more time. Death. D- Curse Death of the Dead Gods. Curse of the Dead Gods. It's basically like, you know how Hades is based on Greek mythology and all of that. Yeah. This has like a lot of Mayan-esque influence to it. And like, uh, it's, the whole thing is just a trip. It's, Hades like it's is all about, right you know, now, actually. It's on sale yeah, you can, you can get it for second. a couple bucks off. Okay. Like yeah. 10% off. Instead of like just having the mechanic where you're just picking upgrades, it's more based around the curses. And instead of like an inherent buff that you get to carry forward throughout your journey, you mm-hmm. selectively pick curses, which are like 
debuffs or different types of tricks that like build up and can screw you over over time and uh it's amazing just definitely take a look at it oh yeah yeah, yeah no, i I'm saw it on, on the right on the steam store and then i'm pretty sure when i went to the eShop to buy mario i'm pretty positive i found it on there as well so definitely want to try it because hades is a good time it's another game i haven't put a ton of time into that i would like to i think i only have like an hour two hours in and i definitely oh, need to that's play blasphemy more. I, I bought it and then every I just I was just playing games, man. All January it was like Hitman Three, Hades. I, I uh, Cuphead. I finally bought Cuphead on Steam. I started playing that. That game's tough. Finish it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I'm Glad still on the airplane. <laughs> I don't even know if I beat the uh, the frog and the, the two frogs at the dinner table. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know the boss. <laughs> My All bad. Right, game journalist. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. All right, well, I, I try to play. It's okay. Almost At least everything. you beat the tutorial. But true, I get. Don't I did. Worry about I, it. I beat the potato. <laughs> I beat him. No, I mean like the tutorial, like how do you jump over oh. the at the very beginning of the game? <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I uh, did. I did pass that. <laughs> that poor man had his entire career ruined. Oh Couldn't my figure god! Out how, to, how to press uh, the right stick and jump at the same time. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty tough game, pretty tough right, game. To that, <laughs> uh, so the next one on my list is not necessarily strictly a character, but it is a universe. It is a Star Wars universe. I was oh. thinking about what I would want, and after playing Neo two for for a while now, I've played about thirty hours. I got to thinking that if Team Ninja made a Star Wars game that was just Similar to Neo 2, like they, they came up with their own unique story if, if they needed to. You can create your own character and you can just run through and just slice and dice people. And it would play exactly like Neo, but Star yeah. Wars. And I'm all about that. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I want it. One inch away from one of my top picks as well. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure you could guess what it is. Oh, I already know just what it is now. It's yeah, it's Star it. Wars with from Soft. It is, yeah. Oh that, my God. I, I, fi- I figured... Because you were playing Neo 2, that that might be a possibility. But no, you're right. Like, it makes perfect sense. I think that that style of gameplay works well with that. Uh, and there's a particular reason for that. But I'll, I'll let you go forward with what you were going to say about it. I, and I think the reason why I pitched Team Ninja over FromSoft is, I mean, obviously FromSoft makes wonderful games. And there is no Neo without the Souls games. Uh, and I think for me personally is Neo is just so fast paced. Like I'm just spamming square and just trying to kill somebody. Whereas in the souls games, I'm like hitting and then backing up a little bit and then hitting and then backing up. So I feel a lot more deliberate. Yeah. So I feel like to me, you know, if I'm like a Jedi or Sith, I just want to get in there and just slice and dice and not have to be too concerned. Think about, um, think about, uh, wow. I'm losing my mind. Think about Sekiro. Oh, okay. That's a good call. Sekiro, in my mind, was the, the close contender. But the reason I, I thought that FromSoft and or Team Ninja, because I think in terms of style, they're not entirely interchangeable, but it's close. Like, right. similar game design. Obviously, Neo was a Souls-like game, so heavily heavily drawn inspiration from FromSoft's development. Absolutely. Uh, that, I keep, I always forget the name. That new Star Wars game that Respawn did. Oh, uh, uh, Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order, that's right. Great game. So, that game, when I saw the gameplay for that, I was like, you know, I wonder if this would work better with uh, with uh, with FromSoft or something like that. Something in a third-person perspective, something with dodging and perhaps counters and other things like that. So, right. I mean, who better to do it, really? Because I think in terms of the parry and the aggressive nature of Sekiro True. mixed with Star Wars, plus, I mean, all the potential customization, the interest in characters... The lightsaber customization. I mean, insane amounts of possibilities there. Sweet. So, yeah, I um, think that would be badass. Really, yeah, I think I, that'd be cool. I'd be cool with it's either for me. either company doing it. I mean, to be honest, I, I think any one of them can knock it out. Because especially because we have Jedi Fallen Order, which is similar-ish. I mean, I had to play that game on easy because again, I I was awful at the Souls like games. So that game kicked my ass. <laughs> So that game was put on easy, but now I feel like I could play that game on normal because of where I'm at. Good job. Thank you. you. Made it. <laughs> I, I finally have made it to the video games. I don't have to I be a, a gamer. I don't have to wait anymore. <laughs> AJ, you want to go next? 
Yeah, my uh, my next one was where I thought you were going when you mentioned Platinum, oh. and it is a uh, scale bound. But I want to see, <laughs> I want to see it uh, handed off to Bethesda Game Studios for id Software to make it. Oh, id Software doing yeah. scale bound, huh? id Software still uh, still consulting with Kamiya, you know, keeping the same feel and style. But I think they could make it into the fast paced type of game that it should be. Okay. I mean, I, I don't hate that. I have it on here twice. So it's funny oh. that you bring up it because, yeah, I got two, two ids. <laughs> Doom id. Doom id. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know they've been wanting to work on, you know, other styles of games. That's why they're taking a break from Wolfenstein and stuff like that. And like going down kind of a different, uh, different route or pardon not, not Wolfenstein, uh, Doom. Doom. And, say, uh, that's machine games. I mean, they're one design. and the same. Whatever. Yeah, same yeah I mean, they're similar. <laughs> one just has you know Nazis. One the other is Nazis has demons, demons, but they're yeah. interchangeable. You know. <laughs> this um, is true. But yeah, they uh, basically like the method that they wanted to kind of change and make some new games. I think would go really well with a game that I think everyone, you know, a lot of people want to see finished at some point. But I don't think Platinum will ever be able to. I think Microsoft eventually, if they decide to do something with it, will just buy the license flat out. Right. I hope so, man, because Scalebound could have been good. I, been I heard that a lot of people were disappointed about it. I never followed it at all. I be, I heard about it when they canned it, basically. When they were I like, mean, it was... It was the biggest victim of the Xbox One generation because it, it was canceled basically because of executives. It had nothing to do with yeah. what the people wanted, what the studio wanted. It was just they couldn't see it being profitable, so it's gone. Right. That it's is the sad reality of our new game industry is the fact that creativity is getting stumped by yeah. executive decision and money, really. It's like, it's a business. You have to make money, but if your developers and your artists can't be creative and they're constrained by time and by focus groups and all this junk, it's like, how are you going to produce a fantastic product? Something that you're really passionate about. Fantastic four. <laughs> the redheaded step. Sure. Glenn. Sure, Glenn. I'm, I'm sorry. We're talking about franchises and you said fantastic. I just yeah, I had to throw out the four, you know? All right. <laughs> Playing on, maybe. My bad. My bad. <laughs> no, I, I think I think it doing Scalebound wouldn't be too bad. Especially seeing as Machine Games has taken a break from Wolfenstein to do Indiana Jones. Um with, yeah. with Lucasfilm. Okay. So yeah, they're they're doing um I didn't even hear about that. I'm curious to see if that's gonna be a first person game or a third person game. Probably not first see. person. <laughs> I mean I would assume not first, but that's what they're known for, so but I'm then again, like, I mean it happens. They people uh, change. I mean Cyberpunk when you know uh yeah. C D P R doing third to first and then um Guerrilla Games doing Kill Zone and then Horizon. So I mean it happens. I, I could definitely see it being third person, but I, I don't I know, even maybe know why it didn't cross my mind, but Naughty Dog making an Indiana Jones game like an uncharted game. Yeah, that, that would be perfect. perfect sense too. Yeah. And and now no, that I idea's think, gone. I think they do great doing that. That that one's just like unless they're like here, take him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been perfect. Well, it's a, I mean it's it's a well known property and it's obviously one of Harrison Ford's most well known roles. But I think it's pretty uh, pretty lost to this generation. I think so too. I don't think for the most part. I think they, there won't are... be any new movies because I think they I think they planned to do one with Shia LaBeouf at some point. Yeah. Uh, after, like as a continuation, they kind of teased it towards the end of Crystal Skull, but uh, then he kind of like went crazy. Probably <laughs> he, he did. He did Shia LaBeouf things. <laughs> well, they're supposedly filming, starting filming of a new one next year with Harrison Ford. Uh, that that's still supposedly. Happening, huh? I mean, we'll see. We okay. will see. Yes, I. Uh, best of luck to that man for that. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't think they could do worse than the Crystal Skull. So. Tr true <laughs> what's uh what's the next one on your list there joe Ooh, i've got a few let me think about this okay well i might i might circle back to this one there was another one that i had that had FromSoft on it but i've already talked about FromSoft, so i might move on from that okay let's talk about rockstar so Ooh. open world games they okay. have made gta which is a more 
a modern design focus, and then you've got Red Dead Redemption, which is, you know, Western with horses and everything. Right. I think that a fantasy-style game would work really well, or at least I'd like to see them try to produce something of a fantasy nature. Uh, best property I could think of was Lord of the Rings, because I love Lord of the Rings. I used to play um, some of the older games on console. I forget who developed them. They were... It was EA, was it not? It might have been. I... I feel like now. they were isometric, if I remember right, or they had a top-down perspective when you'd play. It was like a twin-stick fighter, maybe? I could be remembering there. It's been so long. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so those games, I mean, you know, I think that having uh, a Witcher-style design with an open-world environment and having the entirety of uh, of Middle-earth to, to mess around in, I mean, that's a lot like uh, Shadow of Mordor, I guess, but I'd like to see more emphasis on travel, and okay. on the combat and really i just like to see how rockstar tackles a game with basically exclusively melee combat with a little bit of range combat uh i thought that'd be interesting i don't think there's enough uh for for as ripe as the lord of the rings lore is for picking there's a lot of lore like if you've read even a fraction of the books you know that there's so much that could be explored so the possibilities are pretty much limitless in terms of story or design or characters or what have you so you know take your pick but i'd like to see them try something like that try just hard fantasy you know instead of uh instead of more modern stuff more placed in realism just to see how they do so i was right it is ea that did most of them it looks like Those the games, yeah. the last one before uh warner brothers took over and started doing the um Shadow of Mordor and the Shadow of War series was the War of the North, and that was from Snow Snowblind Studios. Okay, I yeah, I don't, I don't know who that studio not, is. Not so. familiar. Yep, <laughs> don't have a lot of other well-known games. I would guess. Same here. Um, yeah, I'm here. I was gonna mention before you mentioned, uh, kind of like Shadow of Mordor. Is do you think Warner Brothers would give? that license up do you think that they would because it looks like warner brothers has been in charge of even the ea games for the most part um do you think that i mean obviously all of these are just hypothetical what ifs and we want obviously because you know i'm sure from soft and team ninja are not making a star wars game but you know gotta ask those questions anyways just to play devil's advocate is do do you think warner brothers would be like here you go rockstar i mean if it's rockstar asking maybe Maybe they're like, hey, you want to make an open world game? Here you go. Because maybe they just do it online. I think that that Lord of the Rings is just as much Indiana Jones as Indiana Jones. I mean, it's pretty dead to this generation. They haven't done a movie in in eternity. So only those who are current fans of the property would even care. I think the most recent release was the Hobbit films, which I don't remember when the last one came out. Was it like 20... 13 or 14, uh, I think. yeah, Yeah, that sounds about right. So I guess moderately recently relevant but i don't know i can't remember the last time i heard someone even bring it up and, <laughs> and for me i mean it is lord of the rings is kind of a placeholder i think for the fantasy genre in general but yeah i'd like to see rockstar try fantasy and just see how it pans really be kind of cool to to see what they could come up with and just kind of have that I, uh... true rockstar rockstar style open world game i'm okay with that. that red dead 2 really captured something cool at least in terms of the world design and how alive it felt so converting that over to a really just lush ripe with life beautiful fantasy theme would be cool you know right seeing dragons flying overhead and all this other crazy junk i mean i'd be happy with it because my number one gripe with rockstar games is and it took me a long time it, it took until gta 5 and then red dead 2 i hate their shooting mechanics I don't know what it is at that studio because they, they make shooters, right? Technically yeah. they are shooting games and the majority of the gameplay. Yeah. I cannot. It's just, it's so not good. Like <laughs> it's just, I don't want to say it's bad because I've played it's worse shooting. Pretty clunky. Yeah. Uh, it's just, say. it's There's so clunky. <laughs> mechanical so, I mean, I'm, I'm all about swords. Just put, put me in Lord of the Rings and let me use a sword and never have to worry about shooting somebody because man, it's rough sometimes. I did play GTA on the PC for the first time, and shooting was easier, but it was still a little clunky compared to like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield. Uh, and obviously, they're known for their shooting. Rockstar is known for storytelling and open world. But when you have shooting in there and it's that clunky for like 20 years, probably should figure something out. 
But yeah, I, I'd be that's, down for that. That's one of the main reasons why I, I don't want to see them make anything. <laughs> I like, I they're ambitious and they do a lot, but I think <laughs> to me it comes off as lazy development where they make all these really pretty things for the time they release them, yeah. but rather than improving them over time, they focus on monetizing them and mm. it just, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, good point. Such as everybody right now with this industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. It really is. So no, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a real issue. They're, you know, implementing Good. schemes into these games that were never there years ago, and uh, pretty, pretty damaging for the most part. <laughs> it just really puts a bad taste in my mouth. It's like I, I don't want to, you know. I mean, people were pissed about Battlefront Two when that came out. I mean, that whole fiasco with that. You know, it's a multiplayer game. At least it turned out okay in the end. It, it turned out okay, yes, yeah, because but the start... people got mad, and then they made the changes, right. fixed the problems, and then they added a bunch of other content, basically free of charge, right? Um, as far as I recall. Uh, so, I don't know. You can make it up, but it's like I think anyone would say that you'd rather just have them do what they should have done originally instead of having to be yelled at by the community in order to make a real change uh, a quick side actually, note before i jump into <laughs> my next one if uh if my microphone is picking up my nephew upstairs my apologies he is awake so he is playing so my bad to you too and my bad to the viewers <laughs> if it's picking it up i don't know if it is but i can hear him going nuts up there so um uh next on my list is id software and the first one i did was john wick because after playing Doom Eternal and loving that game and the soundtrack and every, everything that that game has to offer, I sat there and I said, man, what if they made a first-person John Wick game and you're just running around and blasting people? <laughs> and it's just they, they can have their own storyline, like whatever. They can do whatever they need to. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Something about them making a John Wick game would be really fun. And, and it could be first person. In my mind, I was thinking it probably doesn't want to do a third person game. Um, so I was thinking that it would stay first person, which is why before we started recording, Joe, I was telling you, you know, we were having that conversation of what I would want versus what majority of people would want. And I don't right. know how many people would play a first person John Wick game, but I'm all in. If, if it came out and was like, Hey, we're partnering up with John Wick. We're going to make a game. I'm, I'm there. I am buying it that day. <laughs> I mean, I think I'd rather first than anything else for that. I think that yeah. makes the most sense. It's just how do you make it work right for the style? And I think the hardest part would be how do you gauge the difficulty? I guess that's true. For me, ideally, that seems like the kind of game where it's like uh, like Hotline Miami style, where it's like one shot and you die, but everyone else dies in one shot. So okay. you've just got to be quick and fast. I, that's That'd be kind of cool, too. Like a... I mean, sure, it wouldn't really appeal to the thematics overall of uh, of the film franchise, but I think for how John Wick is and how it plays out when you watch the movies, I think that a game like Hotline Miami would work pretty well. Right. Um, or it'd be kind of interesting. Just that really pulse-pounding, fast-paced, you know, I just murdered 10 guys in 0.5 seconds, and now I'm pushing this man's head into a, into a bathroom <laughs> stall. Um, you do that, you know in that game so oh yeah no that'd be kind of cool i think that uh i think a lot of games could really fit into that doom eternal mold just like that super fast-paced action style first person game and i don't think there's enough of that anymore especially when all the arena shooters died basically there are no more real arena shooters anymore that are popular i think that unreal tournament is still technically in existence but i mean anybody that talks about it <laughs> right not, not really but it's like i grew lot. up on those games they're fun you know they like, are quake 2 is one of my favorite first person shooters of all time yeah now you can um, give me a, a john wick game like that yes please <laughs> yeah, john wick quake 2 dude <laughs> with the 130 degree field of vision I, you can the, see behind you can see behind you <laughs> the only problem i ran into when i was thinking about this is i know uh what's the guy's name the creative director matt what is his name? What is his last name? That does Doom and Doom Eternal. Uh, he was talking about it on a podcast that you know they they made the game so you're shooting demons and stuff like you know you're not shooting anyone. So that was the only problem I ran into when I again was trying to think like realistically of 
could could they sell a John Wick game? Like, is that people a people thing? People would take a lot more offense to you running up to a normal looking dude, just right? Putting a skull into or putting his head in his <laughs> chest cavity, you know? Yeah, so they tone it down. A, they tone it down a little bit, a for lot more. Sure. John Wick is clinical. Yeah, it's kind of the and, idea. And I mean, I mean, Doom guy is just like, you're the wall, and I'm about to put my head through you. John yeah. Wick is like surgical, precise, clean. You know, I mean, there's gonna be blood, but right. I think that. Uh, I think they could make it work. It would need some tweaking. It, it, it's not For just sure. like a copy paste skin kind of thing because people could would be. not be happy about it. like I just ripped this man's spine out of his head. Any uh, any modders out there on Steam that would like to make that game John Wick, please please, please do. <laughs> I beg you. I want I want to see it. It'd be it'd be great, man. I I'm I'm in. Like I said, if they ever announce that, I I'm buying it that day. I will I will be there day one for them. So. I'm, I'm the only it. thing that worries me about that is like there's so much acrobatic work in John Wick, and like you mm. lose that if you go first person. So I almost think you have to do a third, third person. person. Game. Okay. Which I'm. You gotta be. About. You gotta be flipping and tumbling <laughs> and like all this crazy shit, leaping over people's backs and crap like that. And I think they'd be great at that. I mean, they they make a really smooth first person game. I, I think it could it, putting the resources yeah. in. I think they can make a good third. Maybe yeah. mixing that with. Well, if I were to think of a third-person game that fits that perspective to a degree, uh, I almost don't want to say Assassin's Creed, but Assassin's Creed kind of seems like that, especially <laughs> oh, no. with multi-person combat. Okay. As much as, I hate, as much as I hate the newer Assassin's Creed games, I think that to a degree, the acrobatic portion of it, pretty well executed, and they definitely seamlessly animate between people. So, you know, when you got John Wick going against three guys at the same time, Really, if you're doing third person, the utmost importance is that when he goes from guy to guy and he's doing his stuff and you're doing your combos or whatever, uh, that it looks good. Because, you know, if, if you're just, like, running up, you know. Yeah, like, super stiff. Like, something that looks shitty. It's like, well, I don't want <laughs> to look at this. I'd rather play it in first person. Right. That's a, that's a cyberpunk issue right there. True. Your character models like bent in half while you're running down the street. I mean, <laughs> you have to. You or have in to the do map. It right. If you're gonna do it in third person, I think they could pull it off though. I think depending on how the shooting, because I think really the hard part for that would be the shooting. Like if I'm gonna play an accuracy-based shooter, I want to play it in first person. I don't want to play it in third person. Um, there are good third-person shooters, but uh, you know when I think about it, it's like games like Gears of War. It's not really a accuracy focused game it's more no, like yeah, how many bullets can shoot. i put down range on these guys mm -hmm. behind cover uh i'm not really you know taking accurate pot shots at these guys so when you got to put one bullet in each guy before you get shot and die in the game right um, you got to figure out some way to do it no i i totally get that um man i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait until it's my turn again aj go go ahead your turn now no, 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 skip you. Skip you? What? Yeah. Oh, okay, Joa, your turn. Oh. Then we'll come back to AJ. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm looking up a little resource. And... Oh. <laughs> You're doing we'll circle back to my resource. FromSoft. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys know about this property, so I may not be able to... Uh, you, you may not be able to appeal to it. I will try anyway, my hardest. But if, you, if you know anything about... FromSoft specifically when they were making Dark Souls 1 in particular, there's one particular property and or franchise that they pulled inspiration from very heavily, almost to the point where certain enemies in the game were almost a one-to-one -one rip and the general feel of the universe matched it. Do you have a guess as to what that might be? Have you heard anything about this supposed franchise? I... Well, it's not really a franchise. It's a singular property. I want to say I remember hearing about about some, like, I was watching a video like I want to say a couple months ago about FromSoft, and maybe I might have heard it, but I I don't remember it right don't now recall. off the top of my head. Yeah. So there's a manga called Berserk. Oh no, you, I did not. You ever heard of Berserk I, before? I, I do know of Berserk. I don't know do a know lot it, about okay. it, but I do know of it. Funny enough. Really good. What's our AJ? Oh, I was just saying, one of the best of all time. <laughs> Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you know. So I got I to gotta read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't Damn. start it. It's not finished, and it's been in 
anyone who's read it knows the pain. <laughs> he releases a new chapter every like six months. Oh, I started once... reading it as a child and I'm older than both of you. And it's not. <laughs> much it's miserable waiting for the next one. And it's such a good no. story. It's like you're biting your nails and then it's like, well, now I got to wait half a year to a year for the next chapter. That man's going to die before he finishes the story, which is a shame. They're going to put his brain in a jar just so I can get, <laughs> so my, can just so I can get my ending, please. I want mm. it so bad. Anyways, I, I thought it only appropriate to to have FromSoft develop a Berserk-themed game. There are a few Berserk games out there, but a lot of them are in the styles of... Uh, what are those games? Is it... I want to say Dynasty Warriors, but I don't think that's right. It's like... Similar. Big, open, flat battlefield. You're like, you know, one singular dude, and you just fight these massive hordes of enemies. Yeah, yeah. Big attacks. It's not it's like Dynasty Warriors. Warriors. What is it called? Dynasty Warriors and... Uh... Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hyrule and Wars, yeah. Nintendo just did one for, um, for the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So they've made that style of game. Because really, if you know the manga, the main character uh, is just a big dude with a giant sword, like just huge, massive, thick sword, kind of like the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy for uh, a bit of perspective on the size. And, you know, he's got uh, armor. He's got like an arm cannon and all this other stuff. So <laughs> again, back to Sekiro. I love heavy weapons in Dark Souls because almost every time I play a Dark Souls game, I play heavy weapons. I played the Kirkhammer in Bloodborne. I use the Ultra Great Sword in Dark Souls 1 and 2. I just love strength builds in that game. And although they are clunky, if you take that and you mix it with the fluidity and the design of Sekiro, I think you could produce something uh, pretty magical. And really just their world building um, and their visual design Almost all of it could appeal very well. In fact, a lot of their visual design in general came from the Berserk manga. Okay. Miyazaki has stated on multiple occasions that he's been heavily inspired by that work. And it, it shows. If you've read it, it it's pretty clear. Makes sense. Um, so, a great read. I would recommend if you're willing to be blue balled for the next rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, uh, might as well. <laughs> but what else I got yeah, going I mean, on? <laughs> I would love that. And I think that there isn't. The games that I have played of Berserk haven't exactly scratch the itch so i think that a really singular uh character focused experience that even follows the main story or even maybe a side story of the of the original source material personally i don't care i just want some really solid combat with that character uh, and i think that they have the the pedigree for it i think that you know especially with a game like sekiro where you have the the shinobi prosthetic um a lot like guts has his uh, his arm cannon they could make that work really well, I think. I think they did a great job blending attacks into uh, the prosthetics and mixing that all together. So, I don't know. I'd like to see that, personally. I think that would be a, a pretty big deal for me. I just want more Berserk, really. I'm, I'm desperate at this point. I'm, yeah, seeing, seeing I'm in, I am in need of more, and I think that would be a, a great direction. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. Is this, this what it is? Yep, yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah. That's him right there. Yeah, that style of games, they're called Muso games. And, like, seeing it in that style where you're just weaving through battlefields of people and then, yeah. like, getting random surprise trippy visions of Griffin and stuff like that. <laughs> it works. I think it works well. Because, I mean, you, if you read the manga, like, he, he'll cleave through ten guys with one swing of the sword. So, it makes sense. You know, it, it makes sense for the character to have a game like that where you're just overwhelming odds. You're just mowing these people down like weed in a field. But uh, I also think that if you kind of scale the difficulty of the Souls-like game to something that makes you feel more like a crazy powerful guy, or even something that is kind of challenging, because really uh, some of the stuff that he fights in the, in the actual source material is pretty daunting, um, and he gets beat up quite heavily quite a few times. So uh, I think you know even, even overwhelming difficulty at the same time could work. And also, he fights a lot of big dudes, so Dark Souls has bosses. Uh, and Sekiro has bosses, and they're great at designing bosses. So yes, they are. I, I don't know. They just seem like the best people to do it uh, of anyone that I could think of. Um, I don't know. Maybe a Platinum Game style game, uh, or Team Ninja, a little a little more fast paced, uh, or Team Ninja. Yeah, I think they kind of have a a nice bridge between. But um, yeah, I just thought that kind of kind of made sense to to put them together because they were already inspired by each other in the first place. They might as well be the same property, really. I mean, a after I read it, I will tell you 
if you're right or yeah, wrong. Please do. Please do. <laughs> I, I mean, if I, I order within 30 it. minutes, they'll be here on Monday. <laughs> so <laughs> I have I have one left. I have one left. You got one. I, I have one left as well. AJ, it is your turn if you're ready. Just skip so, you. <laughs> I, I had to look up a little info because I was I was misremembering something, and I knew I was, but I had to double check. Okay. Uh, so it's happened in the past where Square has teamed up with other studios for you know big awesome projects. I mean, technically, it's still Avengers. happening. You know, Outriders is a Square Enix game, even though it's not made by the core you know Square Enix team. Right. It's people, but, people can fly. Yeah. the The most memorable one that I have where it was like a team up game was Chrono Trigger. Um, um, and it got a well, it got Chrono Cross, which was a mediocrely <laughs> game on the PS1. Um, but I want to see them team up with Akira Toriyama again and make a proper successor to Chrono Trigger. Okay. And I, I mean, I think there's way too much that would go into it rights and licensing wise that it would never be able to happen. But seeing them, you know, uh, seeing them make a square Final Fantasy style RPG again with Dragon Ball Z art would be amazing. And it literally hasn't happened in almost 30 years. I love Chrono Trigger. So thank you. It's, it's <laughs> You're giving me some semblance of hope. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I would love to see a proper remake of Chrono Trigger itself. Me that too. alone would be cool. But I mean, I, I doubt, I think a sequel would be more likely to happen than just a straight up like Final Fantasy VII remake style remake I, of Chrono I Trigger. Agree. Yeah. I was, I was actually a little bit sad. I was just thinking about this recently. If you watched the incredibly disappointing recent Nintendo Direct, uh, they remastered a certain game that is kind of in a similar vein to uh, Chrono yeah. Trigger. And I was, uh, in that moment, I was like, why couldn't this have been Chrono Trigger and not Mana? I was so sad. Yeah, the Mana series is like the red. It's a great game, but like, mm, I want Chrono Trigger <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I really would like it. It doesn't even have to be like a full remake. I just can you put it on a modern console with maybe like a nice coat of paint? Right. You, know, you don't have to build it from the ground up. Uh, Could you put it on the Switch, maybe. Yeah, please. Be okay with that. I am excited for the uh, Diamond and Pearl remake, though. For as yeah. angry as I am at Game Freak, and as much as I despise everything <sighs> they've done over the last couple games, Gen Four is by far my favorite. It was my most played. I love Gen 4 so much. And I played the older ones too, but mm. Oh man. Not I to just, not to I'm upset scared. you. But um No, no, don't say anything. I've never played Diamond or Pearl. Oh, well, yeah, that's okay. I thought you were gonna say something worse. I was like <laughs> Gen 4 is, sucks. <laughs> Gen 4 sucks. I'm like, what? No, I, I, I played red, blue, and yellow. And then I skipped all the way until Sun and Moon and I was like, uh, man, I don't care for these games at all. <laughs> Poor, poor man. I missed X and Y, which I hope is pretty good. Obviously, I know Diamond and Pearl is pretty good. I know a lot of people liked uh, Heart Gold and it was just Silver, right? Gold, did, gold, gold and Silver. Gold and Silver. Yeah, okay. Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah. Soul Silver, that's what it was. Okay. Those are like the re-releases of it. They did that. A couple years ago, right? Well, which one was it? Because they, they, they had Red and Green, and then they had Fire Red and Leaf Green as the re-release of the originals. And then they did Heart Gold Soul Silver. Did they do any other re-releases? I forget. Uh, I they remember. did the Ruby and Sapphire remakes. That's, That's right. right. That was yeah. way later. The Alpha yeah. Sapphire and Omega Ruby. Right? Yeah. 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 I love those games. I played Emerald. Emerald is probably my second favorite Pokemon game. To uh, I love that I know the names, but I didn't play any of them. <laughs> Even though I knew like Diamond and Pearl were next on the list to get an update, I was, I was hoping. secretly hoping for yeah. Heart Gold and Soul Silver to get a Switch remake. Oh man, that I would be nice. That would, would be, be nice too. too. But you could play them on the 3DS. I mean, yeah. arguably 3DS is not that outdated of a console to where I would say it's not worth playing. Um, but if you get a Switch, but yeah, I think for the same for the same reasons that they redid. Uh, well, I guess technically Alpha, uh, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby are also only on ds2 so 2ds yeah it just seems odd that they don't port more games over to the switch it, it doesn't seem like it'd be that terribly difficult maybe ds games are just hard to to port over i mean it's nintendo 
yeah. they'll they'll figure it out. <laughs> they so, just I am like glad that it's wait. not the main studio though. I'm I'm actually I was actually happy to hear that when they were that they're redoing Diamond and Pearl and the studio behind it is not Game Freak Studio. So I'm like just okay. leave the game alone. The only thing I don't like so far is I do not like the art style particularly. They went for a very very round cartoonish chibi look or chibi however you want to pronounce it uh and i don't like it like <laughs> I, i'm like the, the the original art style is just so clean looking the, the sprites look great and when they're whether they're scaled up for battles or whether they're small for the when you're exploring the overworld it's like it looks it just looks clean crisp and nice and it's a great <laughs> and it's aged well like you could play that game now and you're like this does not feel like I'm playing a shitty old game on a crazy old console. Like, this feels right. fairly modern. The resolution's low, sure. But, I mean, it looks good. Whereas this new one, it's like, why are their feet so big? Their feet are gigantic <laughs> when they're walking around in the overworld. It's like they've got giant clown feet. And they've got this tiny little body and a giant head. You know. It's like, why are they look so weird? <laughs> no, no I just don't like the look. I don't. And I don't want that to be a turnoff for me because of how much I love it. But at the same time, it's like I'm going to spend 95% of the game in the overworld just exploring around. I don't want to look at the giant feet on my character. <laughs> it's so, like, weird. They just look like giant bubble people. And it's... No, I uh, get that. Seems Something like they animal. really could have just done something a little classier. Um, oh, so, yeah, I don't dig the art style, but... I am still excited nonetheless because I've been begging for a Diamond and Pearl re-release uh, for a very long time because Gen 4 is very near and dear to my heart. In fact, let me go ahead and stand up here real quick. <laughs> I will ask both of you be before I move on to my next game because I, I think I do want to play yeah, them. Cheers. What cheers is the better one, it. Diamond or Pearl? Uh, well, here's mine, Diamond, so I would okay. say Diamond. You would say Diamond? AJ, where do Focus. you stand? Focus yeah, I like Diamond. Diamond? Okay. So get plat or platinum. Get uh, <laughs> get pearl. <laughs> is what you're telling you me. See the, you can see the thing. It's there. There yep, we there go. It is. Yeah. One diamond. <laughs> oh, good God, this game. I will so probably pick good. up diamond then, because I I do want to try to. I mean, it's not a moon word. Oh, okay to me. But I mean, like I said, I I skipped a ton of yeah. games and then jumped into the new new. And I just think Diago's cooler. Although I would argue that on the original system, uh. I would argue that Platinum is the far superior game mechanically because they fixed a lot of things, and you also get both Legendary Experiences plus Giratina, which is a really cool legend, a legendary Pokemon, and Giratina's world, the basically like the space dimension that it resides in, is pretty cool. You know, you like and gravity just shifts around your walk right. around the floor, and then the walls and the ceilings, and it's like whoa, <laughs> uh, which you know blew my however old I was. It blew my mind at the time. I'm like, wow, this is the future of gaming. Blew Angela's mind. <laughs> yeah. So no, I just uh it's yeah, it's very near and dear to me, and I really hope that they don't change too much, and I pray that they change the art style, but they've developed the game this far. I doubt it's gonna happen. They're gonna keep their giant feet, so maybe one day I'll be able to to look past that. But for now it's uh my only real gripe with the game so far. Um Yeah. Very, very excited about that. Glad that they finally unveiled it. Now, if I could just get a remake of the original uh, um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. All right. Last one for all of us. I will, I will start us off. Mine is kind of a cop out, so Woo! bear with me. Show me. It is id Software again. <laughs> now, AJ, I think you have. Joa, have you seen Punisher show on Netflix? No, but I know Damn. of the Punisher. I yes. mean, yeah, I was like, you know Punisher, so that's that's fine. Uh, I was thinking it's software doing a Punisher game because, again, just taking take another character that just, you know, all sorts of pissed off and just wants to go on a rampage, whatever. I thought maybe they could do it. And then my other cop-out is John Wick again. And I was thinking about this when I was playing Hitman 3 is uh, – IOI doing a John Wick game after they're done with their um, 007 games. I think that they would be a good fit for a John Wick as well. So that is that is my last one. Those are two just little cop out answers because same same franchises, 
or sorry, same franchise, same studio, um, using them twice here. But yeah, I don't know. So, something about Punisher and Id or John Wick in IOI, I feel like would be great. I could, I could see it working. I think, I think if anything, I like the Punisher one better. I think that think so uh, too. his, I mean, he's like a, you know, he's a beefy dude by nature and he's just like all manner of pissed off, beats people up like crazy. Right. Yeah, I thought, I thought that might be a good one. I think one. that works better for what Doom resembles currently. Uh, what other game? What other game is there? I'm trying to think. I, Crackdown keeps coming into my brain, but I know that's not it. Uh, what's a game <laughs> Let's not talk about Crackdown you 3. play as a vigilante that would that has like a beat-em-up style? I'm trying to think. Um, I, I don't There's know. a game that's in my brain that I'm recalling, but it, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me or even really anything other than the fact that I just remember driving <laughs> around on a motorcycle and beating people up like a bunch in alleyways. I mean, that, and that's kind of what No More Heroes is. Oh, speaking of that, I could play that now. Because I got a Switch. Three is coming out too. Oh my god, I could finally play that game. I've never played them. <laughs> so. It's a fun game. Travis Touchdown is a, is a goat. Nice. I could play three. <laughs> uh, that game is very weird. But I, I'm in love with it. Really, it's a, a very unique experience, shall I say? Gotcha. I don't really know how else to put it. <laughs> it's uh, you just you have to play it to understand. There's no other, there's no other way about it. So. Okay. AJ, what is your last one, good sir? Uh, something I've always wanted to see would be a uh, kind of a reimagining of Castlevania by the From Software team. Oh. Symphony of the Night, man. Symphony of yep. the Night. Kind of taking inspirations from from Symphony and putting that with the like From Software framework. That would be beautiful. It would be awesome. Like that. that would be amazing. I love Symphony of the Night. <laughs> yeah, you have you have some of the best level designing teams and some of the best story and level designing historical teams like the the game that could spawn from that would be insane. Oh, it would be great. And I think that Castlevania as a... Well, they have they have 3D Castlevania games, the, the non-side-scroller ones. I, uh, I don't have a lot of opinion on them. I mean, they were cool. They I were, think so, too. But I think, that, I think that FromSoft could do... At the time. No, I agree. I think FromSoft could do a much better job. And I think that also Castlevania as a game is also tonally very much so in the same vein as what FromSoft has produced so I think they could really like just create that immense dripping atmosphere that they put in almost all of their games um, and really just nail it could it's be amazing the right voice actor. yeah it's good to get the right voice actor for Dracula, and then we're all set I'm all about it I mean at this point I'll let FromSoft make anything that they want everything FromSoft make every game <laughs> level design I abolish great. all Soundtrack, game studios except great. FromSoft <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, they oh, give me Elden Ring, please give me Elden Ring. Uh, I want it so bad, I really do. I just want, I want news. You want news? I want news so bad, but they announced nothing at all. I'm a broken man. <laughs> Hopefully soon. I feel like it's still a 2021 game, but obviously th- things happen. So, but I think it's still here. I think it's still it's coming out. Not 2021. You are insane. You don't think so? I I think it is more 2021 than God of War is. I'm saying early 2022 at best. I mean, my, I think my neither current mindset. Are, really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I think 2022 at or at the earliest for either. Of them. Interesting. I would so. I would agree. That's kind of where I'm at. Breaking right my now. heart. Let's just move on from that, you asshole. <laughs> uh, I'm glad there are other. I'm glad there are other properties to enjoy in the meantime. But true, man, I want Elden Ring so bad. I don't even just want Elden Ring. I just want to see something about Elden Ring. Okay, you know that's, that's understandable. Maybe a screenshot. <laughs> I don't know. Just something. True. Very uh, true. All right, Joa. What's your last one, my friend? I wouldn't say this one is a throwaway per se. I think that the the property itself is not a throwaway for me it's actually very important to me but i couldn't think of a developer so i might ask for your guys's input on it to see if you have a better idea i just picked one that i thought might make the most sense because of their their pedigree but i didn't even think as a whole package that it would work only for one aspect of it um so daft punk recently got a divorce (laughs) 
I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken. They're I think we all are. Two of my favorite boys. They haven't done anything in like eight years, but I love good group their music. One of my favorite movie soundtracks of all time is the Tron Legacy soundtrack by Daft Punk. It's quite as good. As much as as it is beautiful, I love it. I, I think of every movie ever, in my opinion, as a full encompassing soundtrack how it melds with the movie and the design and the visuals it just works flawlessly and the songs are just fantastic I mean, they, they, they did themselves for never having really done a true movie soundtrack before it was impressive really as, as a first time uh, attempt at it that being said the movie itself obviously most will say it's you know pretty subpar in the writing department the first one is if you've ever seen it most people haven't it's have. probably one of the cheesiest most nostalgia glasses movies of all time because you better go up and watch it. It's not great. Like it really isn't. Um, it's all right. <laughs> the second movie I think is a marked improvement, but I would love a a real Tron game. And I know there's one out there. It's Tron Evolution or something like that. It was based off most the people. Movie, most people right? don't even know it exists. I've yeah. seen like clips of that. I played game. it. Oh, did it's you? Okay. Yeah, I, it was okay. That's the 360 one, right? Tron. Pretty sure Tron Evolution. <sighs> I think that's what it's called. Point being, I just I would love to see uh, a newer Tron game. I think that it would be cool, and I think it's too late now. I don't think it's ever going to happen at this point because the movie came out, the game came out, and there was nothing after it, and they're not going to make another sequel, I would say. Very unlikely, especially now that Daft Punk are no longer together. That movie would be a, a sham if they tried to do a soundtrack without those guys. Um... So the best thing I could think of was uh, Turn 10 Studios, which are the guys that made Forza. Because I think the mm. biggest emphasis for me would be on the light bike uh, or the light cycle races or the, the combat there. I thought maybe... Uh, I forget who developed Twisted Metal. I always forget the name of uh, um, Twisted Metal. Like vehicular arena combat. You know, There's not a lot of games like that. So whoever could make the best feeling motorcycle driving mechanics would really capture that. But, you know, there's also... The Disc Battles, which obviously a racing game company or developer wouldn't have the pedigree for that. Uh, Or, you know, like aerial combat. Um, But really all sorts of things. I think something that focuses more on multiplayer arena combat and less focused on a story-driven experience, which is really what Tron Evolution was all about. Uh, I would love to see it, because personally I am a huge fan of what they did with the universe or the grid in its design with the movie that I'd love to see it as a game and I never really got to to have that fully so it's kind of a, a dream of mine a dead dream so single track studios started Twisted Metal uh, okay. they ceased their op- operations in 2000 yikes I, I knew that they um, went under I wouldn't knew they went under I just didn't remember what they were called yet. and then 989 Studios I believe took over yes looks like Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal 4 um I, it doesn't look like they're gone I just don't think they do anything um so, hear me out okay. I would say if that game were to happen it should be made by that game company who made Journey and Flower Oh, Flower. okay. A game like games. that, I love where those games. Like great. highly artistic, all about just moving through the environment and the atmosphere that you have, like something like that, or almost like the uh, the newer game that came out, The Pathless, yeah. where you're mm. you're always yeah. pushing forward at all times. I dig that. No, I think that'd be cool. I think that really what drew me into the movie, anyways, was the music and the art and the the visual aspects of it. So really emphasizing that further in a game and not being so focused on the gameplay I think it'd work really well yeah I actually I be pretty sweet the developer I was thinking of is um, Insomniac I was thinking about Infamous and and then obviously oh, Ghost yeah. and I was sitting there and I was like man I and I think that with the experience of the horse I mean obviously a horse and the Tron bikes very different very different but I think they can make it work. And I think in terms of the art style, I feel like Insomniac could make a really good... Or not Insomniac, Sucker Punch. What the hell am I talking about? Insomniac is totally not infamous. I was like, man, I oh love Oh my Russian God. <laughs> no <laughs> chance. <laughs> I love Jack and Daxter. <laughs> Dude, I, Jack and Daxter, that's Naughty Dog. <laughs> I know. 
I can't believe I just did that. Uh, my bad. Oh. Sucker Punch. I mean, Insomniac would probably be a good choice, too. I mean, you know, Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man. I mean, they could probably do a pretty good Tron game. But yeah. what I was actually going for is Sucker Punch Studios. I think that they could do a pretty good Tron game just in terms of art style. And I think even in um, in terms of just gameplay in general and, and then soundtrack. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that they'd be a good choice. I think all of them are good choices. Yeah. I think no, I Turn think so 10 too. is good. I think good. if I really think about like maybe not the same, but how kind of infamous felt to play that third person uh, movement and combat, something similar to that, maybe. Right. Uh, could be a possibility. I mean, there weren't any vehicles in infamous, but uh I don't know. I feel like to make a game like that right, you'd really have to pull a lot of talent from a lot of places. The only studio other than that that I could think of that really had all that together was also Rockstar because they've made open world games. But I don't really want it to be an open world game. Yeah, like, I want the linear. solid driving and combat and you know probably third person. Uh, and it seemed like Rockstar had the best pedigree to potentially produce that as a as a concept, but. I don't know. I just thought, I think for me personally, emphasizing the driving mechanics would be of the utmost importance to to truly make it uh, to truly make it right. And even then, I mean, if you look at the original arcade cabinet game, it's dead simple. So it'd get repetitive and boring after a while. There's only so much variety you can add to a game like that right. before you're just like, okay, I'm done. You know, it's like <laughs> you, just, you just drive in front of the other. It's like Snake with two people, you know, so. Understandable. Uh, there are limits, but I don't know. Yeah, I just, I, that's a franchise that I would love to see as a game uh, or maybe VR who knows you can uh, Tron VR your could be pretty good your disc VR. <laughs> that could be cool I- I'm okay with that yeah hell yeah right on fellas any closing thoughts before we head out of here any last minute you forgot to talk about a certain game certain company read Berserk read it I, I mean I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm suffer. going to I suffer <laughs> okay be- before before I talk about that for Berserk how many how many volumes are there because that was one, and they, they seem to have one, and they have two and three. Well, you can buy the Mega Collections, which are these... Uh, I can actually show you. I've got uh-huh. one here. Give me just a moment. Uh-huh. Is Berserk this good, AJ? I mean, I've heard about it for a while, so... Yeah, there's like... 40 volumes of the manga and it's amazing. Oh my god. Unless you play like collections and whatnot. Oh. Uh, you know. There's 40 volumes? Yeah. That's a lot of reading. It is. <laughs> oh my so, god. So this is just one. Of, oh, that's of so, many. okay. That is on Amazon. I found those as well. Oh my These god. These are awesome. I don't really want to spoil them. Let me see here. I wish I could find a better panel to show you. <laughs> Well, point being, like, the art is gorgeous, and the pages are huge, Okay. and this book is just, like, cool. I mean, it's got nice cover. It's got shiny, shiny text. Got the, got the brand right there. The logo. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, these are cool. Yeah, so you can, you can buy these, and it's cheaper, actually, to buy the full book, like this, than it is to buy the individual, individual volumes. Ones. Okay. Um, and yeah, if you buy them in the collections, it's it's typically much much better. In they're, most cases, I think there's yeah, only like six or seven of those. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And I think these are just cooler. Anyways, like I I prefer to keep my collection of these than to have an entire bookshelf lined with little tiny volumes. It's just easier to. Like this. <laughs> and it no, looks cool on a coffee table and all that fancy stuff. Awesome, AJ. Any it's closing like, thoughts like from you? Bible. Um. No. Not really. Uh, try Curse of the uh, Dead Gods. That's about it. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to. I'll be taking a look at it. Trying to decide right now in my head, Switch or Steam. <laughs> Probably Steam. Mm, Switch. PS4. Uh, PS4. Oh. Or, or, PS5. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Is it on PS5 as well? Yeah. Nice. Hades. Come, come over to the PlayStation, please. <laughs> I'll play you no. more. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're going to head out of here. AJ, thank you for coming as always. Joa, thank you for showing up for this one. And obviously, we're going we're gonna to have you on more of them. Uh, oh, we are man. releasing every Wednesday. That is the plan. Unless something happens to me in terms of uploading or if there's a week that for some reason all of us are just too busy and got things going on or whatever's happening. But we're going to look out for boss fights every single Wednesday. Why Wednesday? Wednesday's a good day. Halfway through the week, we'll either make your week better or if your week's good, hopefully we don't ruin it. 
I don't know. I like to think that we're all nice guys. I hope Do we don't upload ruin your on Wednesday week. or record on Wednesday. Uh, upload on Wednesdays. <laughs> okay. That's that's good because I'm very busy on Wednesday. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, upload on Wednesday. So that that is the plan. Every Wednesday we will have a new boss fight for all of you. So little voice crack right there. Boss fight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna head out of here, and we will see you all on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Be kind. Have a good day.